Hey guys! Welcome to Invest Money PH YouTube channel. In this video, we will discuss add on rates and effective yield, especially for term loans, and why it is important to know the difference and the implications. Don't worry, we will focus on the practical applications of such, and I will not bore you with the math behind it. Anyway, we have a free calculator for that. But before we continue, don't forget to show your appreciation to our efforts in this channel, by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell. See you after the intro. Okay. Effective yield and add on rates. In this video, we will discuss the following. First, the basics of effective yield, or EY, versus add on rate, or AOR. What's the difference between the two? Second, how to spot which rate is being shown in our shopping and loans transactions, and how to make better decisions in your loans. Third, how to convert AOR into EY and vice versa. Lastly, usual interest ranges for Philippine loans. In our website www.investmoney.com.ph, we have been talking about loans quite a lot. Loans are not necessarily bad, as long as you use it for purchase of assets and investments, that can make more money, or appreciate in value in the long run. Of course, emergencies may also drive one into getting loans, but ideally not so much, that's why we need to put up emergency funds and insurance to cover us, which we also teach in our website. Now, going back, let's discuss the basics of EY and AOR. EY and AOR are interchangeable when it comes to term loans and cash loans from credit cards. Telemarketers and promotional materials will usually publish AOR, as this is the smaller number, to entice customers psychologically, to avail. Maybe the element of confusion and unfamiliarity, whether deliberate or not, also adds to the reasons why people get into loans unwittingly. Both AOR and EY refer to the interest charge to a loan, just expressed in different terms. This will result in the same interest amount to be paid, after some conversion, which I will show you later. Basically, AOR, by the name itself, is add-on. AOR multiplied by tenor is added to the principal loan amount and this is the total amount of payables for the duration of the loan. The sum can be divided into monthly portions. Recall that in a term loan, every monthly payment we call amortization is split into principal plus interest. Depending on the bank, it may divide the interest equally, but in general, in the Philippines, the interest portion diminishes as the loan becomes older. Nonetheless, the total interest paid comes out as AOR multiplied by tenor. EY is usually quoted in annual terms, so it's the effective interest for the year whereas AOR is usually quoted as a monthly rate. EY will be bigger than AOR, as it measures the effective interest that is charged to the loan on an annual basis, as the loan principal balance diminishes. EY is also more useful in computing the loan amortization schedule, to see the split between principal and interest payments. EY as a percent does not change regardless of loan tenor. Of course the peso amount of interest will change, the longer the tenor is, but EY as a rate will remain the same. AOR meanwhile, since it is quoted by month, will change in total, as the loan tenor becomes longer. Simply put, total AOR increases as loan tenor increases. As a side note, the BSP requires all banks to inform the customer of the effective interest rate that they charge for the loan, also known as EIR. However, the BSP definition includes all other fees on top of the effective yield, to compute the EIR. So EIR will basically be EY plus processing fees, appraisal fee, registration fees, and all other fees. For this discussion, we will focus on EY alone, and we will leave it to the banks to inform you of their EY, and EIR. Let's go to some examples to visualize this further. When a telemarketer offers you to avail of a cash loan from your credit card, also known as call for cash, speed cash, cash to go, insta cash, credit to cash, etc. 
they usually quote AOR. Usual ranges right now are 0.59% to 0.99%. It appears small right? Less than 1%. Reasonable rate, don't you think? Well they do this on purpose to entice us into thinking the rates are low. But the EY equivalent of this AOR will appear much much bigger, depending on what loan tenor you want to avail. For this example, let us use 250,000 cash loan at 0.89% AOR. If you want a 36 month tenor, the EY for a 0.89% AOR will be equal to 19.04%. Now that you see the EY, it does not look as low as you thought, right? The sample amortization schedule is shown here. Suppose you want a shorter loan tenor, say 12 months, the 0.89% AOR will be equivalent to 19.16% EY. Wait, the EY is even higher than a 36 month tenor? As a percentage yes, but since the tenor is shorter, the total amount of interest to be paid in peso terms is definitely less, for a 12 month tenor, than a 36 month tenor. Here's the sample amortization table for a 250,000 loan at 0.89% AOR, equivalent to 19.16% EY, at 12 months tenor. Notice that total interest paid in a 36 month tenor, for the same loan amount of 250,000, and same AOR at 0.89%, is 80,000, whereas if you only pay it in 12 months, interest is less than 27,000. So here, you see that you should not be fooled by low AOR. In this case, length matters. So, the next time you go shopping, or see promos, or get a bank loan, aside from knowing the AOR, you should also know the EY, so you're better able to assess whether the interest is reasonable or not. Next time, ask the telemarketer, not just the AOR, but also the EY. Now, how to convert AOR into EY? and EY into AOR. It's simple. I'm offering you a free Excel calculator that you can download. At the description of this video, simply click the link and it will lead you to the download file. As promised, I won't bore you with the math, so this calculator is very simple, and easy to use. You just encode the interest rate, whether EY or AOR, and it will convert for you. It also carries another worksheet for the loan amortization schedule, to give you a better appreciation of how much interest rates you pay for every loan, depending on EY and AOR. I also suggest you download this app, which is very handy in terms of computing loan amortizations. These tools should help you make better decisions with your loans. For our final topic, we will discuss the usual interest rates in the Philippines. Let's start off with credit cards as they compute rates quite differently. The interest rate or finance charge for credit cards is at 2% for your retail transactions or also called swipes. This translates to simply 24% per annum. It used to be 3.5% per month, or 42% per annum, until the BSP capped the interest rates on credit cards last year. The calculators we mentioned above, will not be useful for cards transactions as this is a revolving facility with no fixed monthly payment amortization, and principal balance can increase or decrease. Our word of advice though, for credit cards, is that you pay the total amount due in full, don't just pay the minimum amount due, as you will end up burying yourself in debt. Again, for credit cards retail transactions, always pay in full. Now for loans based on credit cards, aka cash to go, call for cash, speed cash, etc. The prevailing market rate is 0.59% to 0.99%. You're lucky enough if you get offered the 0.59% rates. Again, these are AOR, so if we convert these into EY, it will range from 10% to 22% depending on loan tenor. Again, not so low right? This shows the equivalence table of AOR, based on loan tenor, and what the equivalent EY is. Next time you get a loan, if you are quoted with an AOR, compute for the EY and encode it in the calculator I provided. From there, you'll see the total interest to be paid, 
as well as the monthly amortization. Don't just decide that if you can pay the amortization, that's it. You should also consider getting the lowest possible AOR, and the shortest possible loan tenor, that can still fit your monthly budget. I also showed here the estimated interest amount to be paid, based on a 100,000 loan, at various AOR and loan tenors. For the average interest rate of personal loans, salary loans, and unsecured loans, the usual rate range is 0.89% to 1.59% in AOR. This translates to 19% to 32% in terms of EY, for the usual 36-month tenor. This depends whether the loan is salary deduction, or you need to issue post-dated checks or pay over the counter. Depends on your credit score as well. Be careful as some fintech and non-bank lending companies, those who offer appliance loans or emergency loans, can actually charge you a much higher AOR. The more risk they assume in lending to you, the higher the interest rate. For auto loans and home loans, as these are more long-term in nature, the usual quotation is actually an EY, not an Auto loans from banks range from 12% to 19% EY. If we convert the opposite way, this translates to an AOR of 0.56% to 0.93%, if you're getting a 60-month auto loan. For home loans, meanwhile, the usual bank rates right now range from 6.5% to 10%, again in EY. This translates to 0.32% AOR to 0.52% AOR, if the loan tenor is 15 years. Again, don't be fooled, the AOR may seem small. But since this is a very very long term loan, the actual interest to be paid in pesos is still much much larger. For example, if you plug in in a calculator a 4 million housing loan at 8% EY at 15 year tenor, it will accumulate to 2.8 million in interest payments alone. Add to that the principal of 4 million, total payables shall be 6.8 million. Before we end, Here's a summary of the usual interest rates charged by banks for different loans. In a separate video, we will discuss further how much interest we actually pay per different loans. I hope with this video, I was able to shed some light on EY and AOR, how to use them in your loans, and how you can consider them in your future loan decisions. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell. See you next time.